Hello, my name is Christine Tasson. I work at IRIF in Paris. And uh, I will present you a tutorial on probabilistic programming semantics for the workshop Categorical Probability and Statistics. So I will first give you some um, introduction on probabilistic programming, its syntax and its semantics. And then I will describe several approaches to the notational semantics. So first, probabilistic programming has been studied for a long time uh, from the semantical sites. And um, the, one of the first work was by Dexter Cousin, who introduced us, uh, an operational semantics for probabilistic programs of first order. Uh, then there was this work by John Z. Plotkin, who, who introduced uh, the probabilistic power uh, domain. And then there is this um, axiomatic, uh, axiomat uh, sorry, categorical axiomatization by uh, Prakash Palamganen. Um, Danus and Heard uh, studied a model of uh, linear logic, which is uh, the probabilistic round spaces. Um, then there was this uh, probabilistic language with uh, sampling functions studied by Park and his, uh, his course. Uh, after that, there, there have been lots of work on uh, pro programming languages with priorities. And there were also um, uh, many programming languages that have been introduced for statistical learning. The idea of these languages is to um, to, to make statistical learning accessible for uh, every programmer. And the idea is that uh, statistical models are described by programs and uh, sampling inference algorithm are um, implemented in the compiler so that every programmer can, can use statistical learning. There, there is no need for uh, uh, an expertise on st statistics. Uh, uh, in order to be able to uh, to implement the uh, inference algorithms and so on. So there have been uh, um, many, many languages that have been introduced. And uh, with this development of languages come many semantical uh, questions, such uh, that is my program corresponding to uh, the model I wanted to describe or um, does the inference algorithm will produce bug um, and so on. And these are hard questions and I, I try to give you some hints on how to reason on them. So the idea of probabilistic programming is to um, model probability distribution by programs. So for instance, if I want to, uh, to represent uh, the Gaussian uh, distribution, here, I can use the, uh, the Gaffton Watson broad idea, which uh, approximates the Gaussian distribution by uh, this experiment where you have uh, some balls here falling down, hitting the nail, and randomly going right and left and uh, starting again. So this uh, Gaussian distribution is represented by this uh, program. And this program is, not, is describing the one sample of uh, this experiment. What does it say is that if you, had, if you are at the last level here, level zero, then you just fall uh, right down, and if you are at level n minus one, then you hit nail and randomly go go left or right and start again. Okay, so this program will, uh, if you run this program, you you will only have uh, one sample, and you are in, we are interested in uh, sampling this, uh, many times it in order to uh, to have uh, an approximation of the Gaussian. So notice that we are not interested in, in the order in which the, uh, the sample uh, appear, but we are interesting, interested in the uh, multiplicities for each value, how many samples will uh, hit uh, this value. 
Okay. So the, the problematic with uh, the pluralistic program, programming languages and uh, their semantics is to study the implementation of probabilistic algorithms with formal methods. So are these implementations correct? Uh, do we have almost sure termination? Can we, uh, can we decide when two uh, implementations are uh, equivalent? when they have the same behavior in any context. And for this, uh, we need semantics. Especially uh, the developers of probabilistic programming languages need to ensure that the implementation of compilers, optimizers, and inference algorithms do have no bugs. And that's the role of semantics. Okay. In order to reason on probabilistic programming language, I will not choose one of these uh, numerous uh, languages, but I will um, take one abstract uh, syntax, uh, which is based on simply typed lambda calculus. So for the district case, I have two, uh, two kind of types, uh, the ground type, which is uh, NAT, and the arrow type for uh, functions, abstractions, and the terms are made of um, simply type lambda calculus, so variables, abstractions that are function, application, uh, with a fixed point operator, natural number, and a conditional. So this is the core of what we, we name uh, PCF. And uh, because we want a probabilistic uh, programming language, we add a coin, uh, which is a fair coin actually, and uh, we add a let constructor, which says that if n is a probabilistic program, then I can sample it, store its outcome into x, and uh, pass x to n to, uh, to compute the, the result of n. I have also a continuous version of this uh, uh, probabilistic PCF with grand type reals and the error type uh, with lambda calculus with fixed points and uh, reals, measurable functions, the conditional, a sample which stands for a uniform uh, distribution over zero one and the let operator. Now, semantics is, has been in, uh, developed to study formally the properties of, uh, of programs written in this syntax. And there are two kinds of semantics. The first one is operational semantics. And the purpose of operational semantics is to describe how a probabilistic program computes. So let's have a look first at the discrete case. So I, um, the probability that my fair coin reduces to zero in one step is one half. And similarly for uh, reducing to one. So I introduce a stochastic matrix, uh, proba, uh, which is indexed by terms, and which tells me what is the probability that M reduces to N in one step. So for instance, for beta reduction, which is the, the basic reduction of, uh, of lambda calculus, if I have an abstraction applied to M, then it will reduce deterministically, deterministically to M, where I substitute every occurrences of X, of the variable X by N. So the probability that the abstraction applied to N reduces to the substituted term is equal to one because it is a deterministic uh, reduction. So now I can um, iterate this uh, stochastic matrix by composition, and uh, I can show that it is well-defined. And if I have a, a closed term of type NAT, uh, we, we can see that uh, the probability, uh, this uh, iterated matrix prob uh, infinity um, applied to M is a discrete distribution over N 
which says what is the probability that m reduces to a natural number m uh, in any steps, any number of steps. steps. And similarly, in the continuous case, uh, I will uh, describe my operational semantics with a kernel. Uh, so uh, the uh, sample, my construction sample, will reduce in um, uh, measurable sets. Uh, the, this probability will be uh, the Lebesgue measure uh, applied to you. And if M is a, a program of uh, grand type real, then I can iterate this uh, kernel and compute uh, the, the probability uh, that M reduces to a value R in any steps. And it is a, a continuous distribution of our reals. Okay, so let's uh, have a closer, closer look at the operational semantics in the continuous case and look at the kernel of terms. So we want to define the probability to observe u, which is a, a set of terms, after at most one reduction step applied to, uh, to m. So m is a program of type A in the context gamma, and uh, u is a measurable um, uh, set of terms, where measurability means that um, for all term S, S of type A in the context gamma, uh, the set of R of R of reals such that if I substitute in S uh, uh, with reals, I get something which is new. This is measurable in R to the N. Okay. So I have defined a measurable space on the, on the terms, on the, on the set of terms. Now, proba is defined as a stochastic kernel uh, on, on this set of terms. That means that if m is a term, then proba m is a measure. And if u is a measurable set, then proba um, u is a measurable function from set uh, to, uh, the, uh, to, to r. Okay, so measurable sets and kernels constitute the category uh, that we call kern, and we can iterate uh, uh, this uh, kern, kernel because there, there is a, a composition and lab uh, in this category. And uh, this uh, infinitely many times iterated uh, kernel is the probability to observe u after any steps uh, starting from n. Okay, so I move to the second kind of uh, semantics, which is denotational semantics or mathematical semantics, whose purpose is to describe what a probabilistic program computes. Um, and we use categorical axiomatization in, in, which, in which types are interpreted as objects in a category and programs are interpreted as morphisms in a category. So if I have a term M, a program M of type B in the context X1, uh, A1, Xn, An, then the interpretation of M will be a morphism from this object, which is the Cartesian product of A1, An, to B. So that a model of simply type lambda calculus is a Cartesian closed category. And uh, it is invariant of beta reduction because in this Cartesian plus category, we have uh, evaluation and clarification. Now, in the probabilistic setting, uh, I need to interpret uh, simply type lambda calculus, and I need to interpret uh, probability. So for instance, the interpretation of NAT, uh, we want it to be uh, the set of sub-probability distribution of N that I describe as sequences uh, such that the sum of the coefficients is less uh, or equal than uh, of than one. Uh, why less or equal to one? Because uh, we X and stands for the interpretation of a program of type NAT, and uh, because in our languages we have fixed point operator, uh, we a program can can diverge, and uh, we keep some probability for this divergence. And for real, uh, we interpret 
it's at the tumor that applied to hair that are the measures over R. Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, interpretation of terms and some intuition on wh what we want. So um, in my language, I have the natural number N and I will interpret it as the uh, probability distribution, which uh, gives you one uh, on the input N. And for the coin, it will be represented at, at, as the probability distribution, which gives you zero with probability one half or one with probability one half. And uh, to interpret the conditional, what I will do is first I sample n. If its outcome is zero, so with probability n uh, indexed by zero, uh, I will get the outcome zero. Then I will compute p. And uh, uh, so that I, I will have to uh, multiply the interpretation of n at zero by the interpretation of p at a. And I have uh, to sum about the possible outcomes of n, either it is zero, either it is different from zero, so that uh, I uh, have to, uh, and in this case, I will multiply by the, the semantics of q. Okay, so the, the last construction I want to interpret is the let operator. Uh, remember, its signification is um, first uh, sample n, store the value of uh, n, the outcome of n into x, and pass it to p. So to compute what is the probability to get a by, by this construction, I have to sum over all the possible outcomes of n, and multiply the probabilities at n outcomes, uh, small n, with the semantics of the program P where I have passed the argument n. And the interpretation for, uh, in the continuous case is similar. So for a real, I will interpret my real as a measure, which is the Dirac on R. And for the sample, I will interpret it as the, uniform measure on zero one. And for the conditional, I have to take into account the measure on, of R on zero and uh, multiply it with the interpretation of P. And finally, for the let operator, I will replace this discrete sum by an integral. And uh, um, I will replace this N, the outcome N by uh, DR which is the atomic outcome. And I will pass the value that I get, which is R, to P, to uh, finalize the computation. So remark that here the interpretation of P has to be measurable, because I want to, uh, to take this integ uh, integrate uh, with respect to my measure here, okay? So this is very important. We want the interpretation of programs to be measurable functions. Okay, so what we need for categorical axiomatization? For we need a category, which is a Cartesian closed, because we want to interpret a uh, higher order that, are, that we want to interpret uh, simply type lambda calculus. And we want the objects to be measurable sets and we want morphisms uh, to be either stochastic matrices in the discrete case or measurable functions. Okay, but the problem is that higher order mixed, uh, finding a category which is Cartesian closed that is compatible with a higher order. Uh, um, for a higher order, I mean, uh, it means that a program can, can take uh, as an input another program set the definition to, for a program to be higher order. Um, it is difficult to find a, such a category, Cartesian clause, uh, with uh, of measurable sets. And this is an old uh, theorem uh, by Oman, which says, roughly speaking, that uh, we cannot make uh, the evaluation measurable. Okay, so we want this, um, this semantics to be sound, this means that the denotational semantics is compatible with the operational semantics. So in the discrete case, that says that for a program, 
uh, the semantic of uh, M is it uh, to compute the semantics of M uh, we uh, I just have to choose about the terms n that are uh, on to which m reduce and multiply the semantic of n with the probability that m reduces to n and it is similar similar for the continuous case to compute the semantic of m I can use the semantic of uh, the the reduce and I have to multiply it by this uh, kernel and uh, this kernel applied to M is a measurable function applied to DT. So I can take uh, this integral because uh, the semantics is, uh, uh, of the term is a measurable function. Um, so a, a model has to be sound. It has to be, uh, uh, model has to be compatible with the operational semantics, uh, but we want also it to be ad adequate, which means that operational semantics and the national semantics match at, uh, at ground type. So if I have a program M of ground type NAT, which is closed, then it's, it is a, a distribution a probability separability distribution over a natural number and its n's coefficient is equal to uh, the probability that m reduces to n in any steps. And for a program of type real, it is uh, similar. The interpretation of a program of type uh, real is a measure and uh, in the continuous case, uh, proba uh, to the infinity is a kernel. Okay, so now that I have uh, described the general uh, setting, I will uh, describe two approaches uh, to denotational semantics. And the first one is the monadic approach. And it comes back to the uh, first models of uh, probabilistic languages, uh, especially the probabilistic power domain. So in this, model, in this model, types are interpreted as continuous DCPOs and programs are interpreted as uh, Scott continuous functions. Okay, so here I am not speaking at all of probability. And I will encode the probabilistic feature uh, as an effect in the monadic lambda calculus of uh, Moji using the probabilistic power domain, which is a monad. And this monad takes a DCPO and associate to it the, uh, the DCPO of all continuous valuation over, uh, over, over the set X. So let's have a look at um, how we interpret a first order program that takes integers that go from NAT to NAT. And uh, the type of NAT is interpreted as the flat, uh, uh, flat domain. So all the natural are incomparable, and there is this uh, bottom which uh, interprets uh, divergence. And uh, if I apply the probabilistic power domain to uh, to the to m bottom, then it is uh, the probability distribution over n bottom. Okay. So now the interpretation of a program from NAT to NAT is given as uh, continuous uh, function from n to this probability distribution. And the meaning is if I give to m a value, um, sorry, an input, then it will produce a probability distribution because m is a probabilistic program. And now if I have, uh, if I want to, to compose two programs, I have uh, to use the uh, classic category. And uh, this allows me to interpret this let operator, which says that, well, X can be a um, random variable. Uh, um, uh, this, uh, sorry. Uh, can be a random variable. And to compute M, I first have to uh, uh, sample X gets its outcome n 
and pass it to M. And this is uh, the, the meaning of this interpretation, which says that to compute the probability that let N equal X in M produces Q, I have to sum over all the possible outcome of my random variable uh, X and multiply it by the probabilities that my program M will produce Q knowing that X has a outcome uh, N. The problem here is to, to know if there is a, a categor cate uh, sorry, Cartesian closed category of continuous domains that is stable under uh, the probabilistic power domain monad. And this is a difficult uh, problem. There, there have been lots of work on, on that. And uh, the, recently, the, um, in, okay. uh, recently the, there is this work uh, of um, uh, quasi Boas spaces, uh, which uh, is a model uh, of, uh, of probabilistic programming in the continuous case. case. So rough, roughly speaking, a quasi Boas space is a set equipped with a notion of random variables. And I won't give you the precise definition, but just some hint on how it is built. So first, it is great because the category of QBS quasi Boas spaces is Cartesian closed. And second, uh, the monad of probability measure uh, uh, um, applied to, to a QBS is a QBS. So how, how uh, is it working? How can we turn this uh, um, uh, sets equipped with uh, these uh, random variables? Uh, how can we turn it to, uh, into a Cartesian close category? And the trick is that uh, uh, quasi broad spaces are a category of pre-sheaves, uh, that pre the category of pre-sheaves that preserve uh, countable products, and it's the category of, on, on, of pre-sheaves on the on S mesh, which is a category of Borel space and measurable functions. And QBS uh, inherit the Cartesian closed closed structure of uh, sets, so this pre-sheave construction. And it is the case that the G monad on mesh on, on S, uh, S mesh. Um, that associates to a measurable space the set of its probability measures, uh, this G monad extends from mesh to a QBS. And that is why we can interpret uh, uh, probabilistic programming language with continuous uh, functions and uh, with sampling conditioning, which are uh, operations that are important in uh, programming languages. Uh, that is why we can interpret all this in, uh, in QBS. Okay, so now I, I move to uh, another approach to the national semantics, which is based on linear logic. So I will first recall what is a linear logic uh, uh, categorical axiomatization. So linear logic is, um, a, um, is a proof system uh, where there, there are two uh, uh, kinds of connectors. There, there are the tensor, there, there are the, the Cartesian product, and there is a, a Schrick modality which uh, relates the two words. So more precisely, there is a, a linear category, which is a symmetric monoidal category, uh, symmetric monoidal closed category. And in our case, this linear category will, will be made uh, of probabilistic spaces as objects and linear functions as morphisms. Then there is the, a commonad, Schrick, uh, which gives rise to a co-commutative commonoid. And uh, this uh, commonad is monoidal. Okay, and if I consider the classic category of this commonad, then I recover a Cartesian plus category. So uh, I, what uh, I get is a model of simply type lambda calculus. Indeed, the very uh, first idea, uh, uh, the key idea of linear logic is to decompose the nonlinear map of uh, lambda calculus into a linear map. And this modality, which says that uh, to compute B, you can use 
as many times as we want uh, the resource, res resource A. So in our setting, in the classic category, objects will be probabilistic spaces and morphisms will be seen as analytic functions. Okay, so I will now introduce these probabilistic round spaces. And to do that, I will start from uh, the semantics of Bayesian network, uh, which have been related to, um, um, to this, uh, oops, sorry, to this graph theory. Uh, okay, so here I have a Bayesian network, uh, which is silly, which says that just that uh, the grass, uh, the fact that the grass is growing is uh, depending on the fact that the sprinkle is on and that it's raining, which are both depending on the fact that we are in winter. So nodes here uh, are represented as uh, probabilistic distribution over true and false. And uh, um, an edge here represents the, the, the conditional probability, for instance, that the sprinkle is on, knowing that the winter, we are in winter. And it is represented as a stochastic matrix, which is indexed by the states of the sprinkle and uh, the states of the of winter. There are some conditions on Bayesian network which, which ensure that we can compute the probability that the grass is growing just by composing all these um, uh, this, uh, stochastic matrices. So for instance, the probability that the sprinkle is on is uh, obtained by multiplying this conditional probability with this distribution, okay? This is the sum on the state between true and false of the probabilities that the sprinkle is on knowing that uh, we are in winter, uh, multiplied by the probability that we are in winter. And it is the same for the probability to that the, it is raining and uh, the probability that the grass is growing uh, depending on the rain and the sprinkle, and I can uh, compose all these um, uh, these matrices uh, to get the probability that uh, the grass is growing. Okay, so um, this is the very rough idea behind uh, probabilistic round spaces that I will introduce now, and that was studied by Danos and Herhard. Uh, probabilistic round spaces constitute an adequate model of probabilistic functional programming with discrete probability. And the category is defined as follow. An object of this category is given by a web, which is a universe, a set of final states, which can be uh, uh, infinite. And it's also given by a set of vectors, which are uh, sequences of positive reals indexed by this set, of the, uh, this set of states. And the intuition uh, at uh, ground type, uh, uh, first I should say that a type is interpreted as an object in, in this category, and the interpretation is defined by induction on, on the type. And for instance, for the type N, uh, NAT, P of NAT, will be sub-probability distribution over N, which can be seen as sequences of um, the, the probability to produce a natural number. Okay, and similarly, the, uh, the, the object associated to uh, the booleans uh, has two states, true and false, and the set of vectors is just a set of sub-probability uh, of being true or false. Okay, so I have interpreted my uh, types. I want to interpret my terms, so I need a, a notion of morphism. And I, if you think at this Bayesian network, uh, this, um, this edge is interpreted as a stochastic matrix, 
the, which is just a, a sequence of uh, positive reals indexed by the in, uh, set of uh, states of the inputs uh, times the set of states of the outputs. If I want to compute the probability uh, as shaded to, to y, I will get a vector in P of y whose coefficient b is uh, um, computed by matrix multiplication exactly uh, as it was computed for uh, Bayesian networks. Okay, so now if you, if you think to uh, the Galton Watson board, um, I remarked that we are not interested in the order of the samples, we are interested in the samples in their globality and especially to their multiplicities. So if we want to interpret programs that will uh, take into account this, uh, all these samples without looking at the, uh, the order, but just looking at the multiplicity, we have to use uh, um, more nonlinear morphisms. And to do that, we will replace the, the, the input by finite multisets of states of the inputs. So that means that I can use uh, my input x many times with different outcomes. So now to know what is the probability to produce a, a b uh, from x applied to a random variable x, I have to uh, sum over all the possible uh, multisets of outcomes and to multiply the probability that x will produce all the states appearing in this multiset m by the uh, probability that my program uh, big M will produce b no, uh, with this uh, multiset as input. Okay, so just let's stop and have a uh, look at this formula. I can uh, recognize a, forma, a formal series. Here I have monomials, okay, with infinitely many variables xa, uh, and the coefficients. Now, a program is interpreted as a morphism, uh, and this interpretation is defined by induction on the structure of the program. And for instance, if I have a natural, it, n, it will be interpreted as a probability distribution was um, such that the probability to produce n is one, and for coin, it will be interpreted as uh, this probability distribution, which says that the probability to outcome zero is one half, and the probability to outcome one is one half. Now, if I have a look at uh, a program, a first order of program, or the program, for, uh, sorry, uh, higher, uh, a program of type A to B, it will be interpreted as a, a function from PA to PB, which can, can be seen as a formal series. So for instance, a program of type unit to unit will be interpreted as a smooth real function, smooth real function from 0, 01 to 0, 01, and a linear program from type NAT to N, NAT will be interpreted as a substochastic matrix. To be linear for a program, it means that it will use exactly once its input to produce the, uh, the output. Okay, so this uh, model is sound. It is uh, compatible with the, uh, the, the operational semantics. It is adequate. That means that the, the denotational semantics and the, uh, the, the operational semantics um, coincide at ground type. And we prove that uh, it is fully abstract, which means that it's, uh, the two semantics also correspond at higher types. More precisely, precisely, two programs have the same denotational semantics if and only if they behave the same in any context. Okay, and this full abstraction result generalizes to different settings, including quantum programming. Okay, so I have, I'm done with the discrete case. 
And now I will present you uh, um, a semantics for a pluralistic programming languages with uh, continuous probability, which is uh, measurable cones and measurable stable functions. They have been introduced by uh, Erad Pagani and myself. And um, they propose to, we, we propose to build a uh, Cartesian plus category, which is compatible with uh, measurabili uh, measure measurability and which is um, based on complete cones. Okay, so we do that in three steps. The first step, step is to consider the category of complete cones, which are convex uh, DCPOs. Uh, and uh, Scott continuous functions. The problem is that this category is Cartesian, but it is not closed. So we had to um, uh, consider uh, more restricted uh, uh, functions. And we consider, uh, we introduced uh, stable uh, Scott continuous functions, uh, and we get a, a Cartesian closed category. However, this um, function, uh, not every stable function is measurable, and as programs, the interpretation of programs has to be measurable functions, uh, as we have seen, we, we had to introduce uh, measurable cones, uh, which are complete cones with a measurable test, and um, we get a Cartesian post category with a measurability included. So I will not go into details of uh, complete cones and so on. What is important for me is that if X is a measurable space and uh, the set of measure of X is a cone, uh, probability current spaces uh, induce uh, cones. And I want also to, uh, uh, to give you some hints on the stability. Uh, so this property was introduced by Thomas to uh, solve the problem that um, the category of complete cones and Scott continuous functions is not cat Cartesian closed because curing is not uh, is not non decreasing. So we um, Thomas uh, Thomas Erhard introduced this notion of uh, stability. Uh, which is uh, um, uh, which comes from uh, which was also, uh, already introduced for, uh, in mathematics as the infinitely non-decreasing function, and which is related to uh, Lipschitz functions um, or and uh, different quotient. So a function f, uh, we say that it is n non-decreasing if uh, n equals zero, then it means that f is non-decreasing. And if n is uh, more than zero, then uh, we ask that the difference f x plus u minus f x is n minus one non-decreasing. So it's a recursive definition. And we say that the function is st stable if it is cut continuous and infinitely non-decreasing. That means that it is non-decreasing at uh, any steps. It's a kind of uh, um, functions are uh, uh, infinitely many times convex, uh, so something like that. And it solves the problem to, be, uh, to, to get a Cartesian plus category. But it is independent from the measurability problem. And we can um, add um, uh, measurability uh, by using a, a trick which is uh, similar to, uh, to the pre shift construction of uh, uh, quasi broad spaces. So I just remind you why we need this programs to be interpreted as measure, it's because we want to interpret this let uh, operator, which is interpreted through this integral. And f is not the interpretation of n. Uh, delta is the direct measure. So that n, uh, m is the measure uh, inter interpreting, um, sorry, mu is the measure interpreting n. And we need that f uh, composed with delta uh, has to be measurable. 
but there are there, there are seven functions we which are not uh, measurable so that we we need to equip every cone with a notion of measurability and we do that by uh, by using uh, measurability tests uh, which are first defined for uh, uh, inspired by uh, the measure uh, measure sets on uh, on R and uh, I will pass this definition because I think I, I've already done a, a lot of time but everything is described if you are interested in these definitions you can have a look at, at the article or ask question and I will move to I will uh, go to uh, the conclusion so if you have to take something on uh, first uh, the first thing is that this semantics is useful to formalize uh, program, uh, programming languages in order to reason about programs independent, independently from syntactic choices and uh, it is hard to define a semantics for uh, functional probabilistic programming languages because higher order uh, is not compatible with measurable spaces and there are two approaches one which is based on uh, the probabilistic monad, the cheer monad, and which represents the probabilities as effects. And the other approach is based on linear logic, where quantitative properties uh, such as probabilities are built in the interpretation of, of types. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. If you have questions, you can go to Zulip uh, and um, and that's it.